to my channel. I'm Alita. These are my books and you've reached Alita in the books. In today's video I am going to show you the 23 books I must read in 2023. By the time you are seeing this it is the end of January, beginning of February. I apologize. I'm just so out of touch with filming lately <laughs> that I'm so far behind. But I promise that I'm getting better, trying to get better at this. So I have my 23 books right here in these piles. Uh, <laughs> they're going to go at the bottom of my TBR cart. They all are books that are associated with goals like read nonfiction. So I have a stack of nine books that are nonfiction that I'm going to try and get to this year. No, 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 no. That I'm going to get to this year. Then some of these are, these are all fiction, but some of them are like book of the month books. So I want to make sure, hold myself accountable, read those. And some of them are just books that sound fun that I've really been wanting to read, but for some reason haven't. So let's just jump right into these 23 books. I'm not going to give you a huge synopsis of each of them. I don't think like, cause then we'd be here forever. We'll see. fiction because it's the smaller pile of the two. I have already put these into different types of nonfiction. So the first three books are like spiritual books, kind of more like Wicca or witchcrafty, but not exactly. Anyways, let me just show you. The first one is Palmistry, Your Highway to Life. So this is uh, going to help me learn how to read palms. When I was younger, I didn't know everything, but I was, you know, like I practiced more. So I knew some stuff, but I want to get back into it. So that is book number one. Then I have Auras and Chakras, Harnessing the Energy Within. So again, it's just like feeling auras, knowing what the different colors mean, different, you know, and it's really short. So I think that'll be good for me. I tried to put short books and long books. So, you know, we'll see how I did. And the last like magical spiritual one is the secrets of astrology a complete guide to sun signs planets houses and more uh i have always been intrigued by astrology but i've never like learned more than the basics and i would love to all right our next three books that are nonfiction are a sub genre of nonfiction that I absolutely love. What is it? It is true crime. You are completely right. Uh, so the first one is Unbelievable by T. Christian Miller and Ken Armstrong. I believe there's a, yes, there's a Netflix show now that I would like to watch after I read this, but this is a case that I know some about. So there was this woman in Seattle who was brutally attacked in her home and no one believed her. Two years, two or three, I think it was two years later uh, in Denver, they are having similar cases to the one attack in Seattle. And now the cops are coming back to talk to this woman, Maria, I think, Marie, 
And they're like, oh yeah, we believe you now. And, you know, it's kind of like the whole aftermath of, well, you didn't believe me first, so why should I help you now type of thing. And like, what's going on with in Denver. I think, <clears throat> I'm like 95% sure that the army, there's like a army cover up or a conspiracy that has to do with like the military or the army being part of it, but I don't remember 100%. The next true crime book is The I-5 Killer by Anne Rule. I tried to read this at the very beginning of my channel and for some reason I DNF'd it. I think that I didn't really give it a good shot because I had like the ugly mass market paperback edition. And it's so hard for me to read mass market paperbacks. I don't know why. I just, I think the writing's too small and I just, I just don't like them. I know some people love them. That's great. I love that for you. But for me, it just didn't work. Uh, so I don't think I actually gave it a good enough shot. But the I-5 Killer is a true story of this man, it says the true story of the NFL draftee who became a perverted serial killer. So this guy, Randall, I know a little bit about this case too. Uh, he would go up and down the I-5, mostly in Washington and Oregon, sometimes California, but mostly it was Oregon and Washington. And he would verge off the I-5 freeway and find a house where a woman was home alone and he would he would murder her but like not just murder he 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 made her suffer a lot I think I don't remember how many women he did that to but I remember this case, like, I think this was in the late 80s, so before I was born. But I do remember hearing about this because my dad always lived in, like, right off the I-5 freeway. In 2022, I read... The Killer Across the Table by this author duo and I was so <laughs> enthralled with that book. It was just like a bunch of different stories of and interviews with different serial killers but this one explains why like the motive of killing someone and like I myself don't understand it but I just wanted to read another book by this author duo because they were amazing last year when I read the other book. I kind of really want to read their entire backlist together and just read all of their books so it's a goal someday not this year but someday I would love to read all of their books. Our last three nonfiction books are memoirs. I found that I really enjoy memoirs a lot, more than I thought I would. So there's Sickened, The True Story of a Lost Childhood by Julie Gregory. I believe that this follows this girl who her mom says she's really sick and she spends a lot of time in the hospital and I thought that I could connect to that. But then her mom is excited that her 12 year old daughter is too skinny and weak and is in the hospital because her mom has, is it Munchausen's? I don't remember. It's that disorder where you think you're sick but you're not really sick so you make yourself sick so that you can 
get like medical care. I think it's Munchausen's, but I don't remember. Um, well, anyway, the mom is actually making the daughter sick. Then I have Wasted, a memoir of anorexia and bulimia by Maria Hornbacker. Uh, this is all about like bulimia and, and anorexia and I thankfully have never had an eating disorder but it's something that has always intrigued me like why do people get eating disorders and things like that and uh, I've had friends who have suffered with them and I just I just want to understand a little bit more. The memoir that I want to read is Group, How One Therapist in a Circle of Strangers Saved My Life by Christy Tate. So the power of like group therapy. And then there's also, I don't own this one, so it's not legitimately on my list, but someday I want to get, you should talk to someone. It's a book of the month book or like there's a book of the month edition but it's basically about this therapist who has to go to therapy because there's so much stress going on in her life the first one is want to go private by sarah dar Littman. uh most of my young adult novels like if i don't read them this year i'm gonna unhaul them this one is probably the one that sounds the best out of my young adult novels this one follows abby meets this guy named Luke online and they start chatting every day and getting to know each other and then Luke and Abby decide to meet up in real life but Abby discovers dun 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 Luke is not the guy in the pictures come on we all saw it coming um I'm obsessed with Catfish the tv show and I've there's like true crime daily i don't think they've done any of them since the pandemic but they used to have this cop pose as like a teenager and they would have like a sting house and when the guys came you know they would say some very terrible things in the conversations and then they would meet up with this child to for some you know quality time together and um then they got arrested and uh I don't know I'm very intrigued by those the next one is a uh, middle grade technically I have 13 middle grade 12 middle grade because I want to read the entirety of a series of unfortunate events. I will by Lemony Snicket. I want to read that entire series before August when I go back to school because starting next school year in August, I am going to be I feel hold on. I'm going to go on a little tangent for a second. Sorry for this little tangent break. But I feel like in the past like year, just over a year now, that I've been teaching, I've seen tremendous growth in myself and I'm so proud of myself for that. But I can only get better from here because I look back at last school year's uh, year and I'm like, oh, I can't believe I did that or this year I would do it different if that were to come up type of thing. And I just see myself critically thinking about my teaching and kind of looking at where I came from and where I'm going. And uh, one thing that I really, really want to work on is that I don't always do a read aloud. And I know it might not seem like a big thing, especially if you're not a teacher, you might not understand. But I want to incorporate two read aloud times in my day. One is for whatever chapter book we're working on and one will be for a picture book. So that way I get a little bit of variety and I'm in second grade. So I have some readers that are like very good readers. They can read 
chapter books on their own. So they would enjoy the chapter books with me. And then I have some uh, readers that aren't quite where they should be. And I feel like they would enjoy picture books more. And I feel like all, I mean, all second graders would like the picture books because, you know, they have the pictures in there for them. The chapter books, I realize are a little bit harder for some of my kiddos, especially that like comprehension. We work on a lot of comprehension and they don't quite get it because there's no pictures to show them what they should be thinking, if that makes sense. And I know that sounds kind of weird. Unless you're a teacher, then maybe you understand. I don't know. Anyways, let's go through this. Uh, so I want to read all of the series of unfortunate events because that's going to be the main series that I work on for my chapter book read alouds. You know, one chapter a day. I feel like that could be easy. Then another option, I do want to put this in my classroom, but I feel like I'm going to love it. So I might have to buy myself a copy and put this one in my library at school. So this is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. And I believe that this follows this girl named Morgan Crow who's supposed to die on her 11th birthday. I don't think she dies. I think she gets swept up into this magical world. And that's all that I know. That's all I want to know. But I do feel like if I'm in a, like, a middle grade, it's going to be this. Then I have Lost You by Halen Beck. I absolutely love Halen Beck's writing. I mean, I've only read one thing, but I loved it so much. So in Lost You, you follow Libby and Ethan, who are on this dream vacation. I don't know where they go, but they go to this vacation as mother and son when Ethan goes missing. But... What you don't understand is that Ethan isn't missing anymore. He's been found. That just gives me so many questions. Like, is Libby really his mom? Where, where, who found him? Why? Oh, what is going on in this book? And I can't wait for it. The next two are book of the month books. The first one is You're Invited by Amanda. This last name right there. Yep, this is a thriller in which Amaya is invited to her ex-boyfriend's wedding because her ex-boyfriend is marrying her childhood best friend. And she gets invited and then the bride goes missing. And she's very hostile about them getting married anyway, like that's just a no-go. So when the bride goes missing, everyone suspects Amaya had something to do with um, the bride's disappearance. And another book of the month book is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I read A Flicker in the Dark by this author last year and loved it. I mean, I gave it four stars because I found the ending to be a little bit predictable, but it was such a fun ride and it was action packed. So the premise of all the dangerous things is that this woman, what is her name? Isabel. Isabel. Her son, her toddler son, is kidnapped from his crib and now it's a year later and Isabel hasn't slept she's trying to figure out what happened to her son and he's still missing I this premise sounds like it could be five stars so that is precisely why it's on this list and I know that I like Stacey Willingham's writing then a, ro a fun romance that I want to read is Faker by Sarah Smith this follows Emmy, who works at like this construction company, but she's like the office manager. And uh, she says that she goes in to her job and she has to fake it every single day because like fake it till you make it type of thing, which like I completely 
that's how I felt all last school year. Like, oh, I'm just pretending to be a teacher. <laughs> you know, like imposter syndrome. <laughs> uh, but then she makes this deal with her office enemy. So it's like hate to love. And this, I'm not exactly sure what the deal is, but they get thrown together to work on this charity event and then they start fake dating and you know fake dating only lasts so long before it becomes real and I the next book is lucky by marissa stapley this is well i mean look at this cover it's so cute because in the sunglasses you can see the vegas strip but this follows lucky who is a con artist and she's trying to commit a con in Las Vegas. And I'm excited. I think that she won the lottery while she's here. But because she's a wanted woman, she can't get the jackpot that she won. So she has to find someone who's not going to ask too many questions <laughs> to get the money for her. And uh, I just think it's going to be really cute. Really cute. I don't know if it's going to be cute. I think it's going to be really good. I love following like a con, con artist or an unreliable narrative. And I feel like she's going to be both. This is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I've heard so many amazing things about Mia Sheridan as an author. I also really want to read something by Mariana Zapata, I think that's her name, uh, like All Roads Lead Here or The Wall Pig and Me. That's not technically on this TBR, but eventually I want to get there where I try some of her stuff too. This is a slow burn romance it says one of the top 100 romance no novels of all time on goodreads then we have love and theft by stan parish so if you look in here then you can see the vegas strip again so this is another <clears throat> vegas story but this one is about i think five or six uh misfits or like people that you wouldn't think would be friends and the six of them i'm gonna say they're six i'm not entirely sure the six of them become like this found family and they try to commit an epic las vegas heist i guess we're kind of just switching genres i didn't really put them in any order so i'm sorry but this is the rehearsals by Annette Christie. This is a time loop romance. Oh. Uh, I realized that I love like the groundhog effect, time loop type of thing. This follows Megan and Tom at their rehearsal dinner, which is the day before their big day. But everything goes wrong, just like completely wrong, terrible, not sure what happens, but everything just, you know, mistakes were made, everything goes wrong. They go to sleep mad at each other, even thinking about calling off the wedding. They wake up, and it's the rehearsal dinner day again, and they continue to relive their rehearsal dinner until they get it right. And then they can finally get married. And this just sounds so cute. Okay, this next one is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. In 2022, I read a lot of like books that have an already established couple. And I found that I love that trope. So a lot of times like, People don't tell you that, I mean, like, as a little girl, my dream was like, oh, get married, have kids, and, you know, happily ever after. But 
honestly, that's not realistic because you make a choice every single day to stay with the person that you're married to. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes like you have really good days where it's just like, oh, that's my person. That's my best friend, you know? And there are other days where it's hard to be married. <laughs> you make that choice to stick out thick and thin, you know, sickness, health, everything in between. And I don't think you really realize how much of a choice it is until you are married. Like I just thought, oh, we're going to get married and happily ever after. But no, there's, there's a lot of things that go into marriage and like, I'm happy that I'm married, but it's a choice and it's, you know, like he's my best friend and my husband and everything. But sometimes he's also my worst enemy <laughs> and someone that I wish I could just like kick out, you know, like shut him out of my life because that's how I get when I get upset. I, I used to be like slam the door in people's face and, you know, just like live in my madness. <laughs> but we don't do that anymore. I don't do that. Anyways, let's get back to this list. This is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is one of those already established couples. I think it follows Yasmin and Josiah who, uh, they're divorced or they're in the process of getting divorced and it's been a few months and they're finally figuring out how to work together because they own a business together and how to co-parent together but apart. And through this divorce, Yasmin realizes that maybe she didn't work hard enough in her marriage to Josiah so she wants things to work out with him and I oh I'm so excited for this I feel like it's gonna be hard hitting and that I'm just gonna connect to it I think that's why I like this trope so much of like a couple that's you know going through a hard time or maybe on the brink of divorce or divorce, but they're trying to make it work. And I think I like it because I realize how hard work marriage is sometimes. And uh, I I'm rooting for them already and I don't even know them and I'm excited for this one. All right, the next one I mostly got because of the author. This is The Island by Adrienne McKinney. I read The Chain in 2022. It actually made my some of my best books of 2022. I'll link that best books video up here. You can go check that out. But I love Adrienne McKinney's writing. And this is, I don't know a whole lot. I just know it's going to be a Hulu original series, which is cool. But more importantly, it's about this family vacation. It's like this dream vacation at this island. Yeah, at this island. And uh, the dream soon becomes a nightmare because people are out to get them. These last two I've actually already read this year. I read them in the beginning of January. So if there are videos of me reading either of them, I will link them up here for you as well. I think it's up here. But the first book is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. This was so good. They were 11 when they sent, sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars. So you follow Naomi, Cassidy, and Olivia, who are best friends, have been their entire lives. And now it's been a 20 years, I think, since they put this man in jail for, or in prison for, let me back up. Naomi was attacked 
in the woods. And uh, she was stabbed. She's lucky that she didn't die when she was 11 when she was stabbed. But they put the wrong person in jail, in prison for this, because they lied. And you're trying to figure out, well, why would an 11 year old lie about what happened to her? Or who did it? And it was so action packed and so many dark secrets and unreliable narrative. And this is just the perfect thriller if you like thrillers. It's full of dark secrets, twists, and turns at every corner, and the whole thing is unreliable. And then our last book that I have already read is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rulick. I will not shut up about this book, so um, best book of 2023. I'm just kidding because like it's the beginning of this year, but like really. So you follow Mallory, who is a drug, a recovering drug addict, and she gets this job at this, at, as this wealthy family's nanny. I actually have a reading vlog of reading this one along with a couple of other books. I'll link that up here as well. But... Uh, you follow her. She's very unreliable. You don't know if you can trust her, which, you know, like like I've said before, one of my favorite things ever. Um, but Ted is the name of the boy that she watches. He draws her pictures like that and gives them to her and they're really cute. And, you know, like you can tell they're a kid drawing, but then eventually... Uh, the, the pictures get darker and it makes you wonder what's going on. Like, can a kid really draw that? And then there are creepy things going on inside the house where Mallory says that she hears Ted talking to himself, but it's like a phone conversation. You can only hear half of it. And... You wonder if there's like a haunting or if there's a revenge tale because there's some background in here about maybe someone's out for revenge and there are so many layers to this story and like I've read some reviews since reading this and I understand why people, a lot of people don't like the ending. I love the ending because here's why. I read a lot of thrillers and a lot of horror and um, it never surprises me. I can always predict it, but this one surprised me. Hidden Pictures surprised me. I did not see the ending coming and I love that for me. So those are the 23 books I must read in 2023. I hope to have this up by February 1st. So let me know how I did in the comments below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts. And we can talk about it in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.